Hi everybody, my name is Kate Haley. I do work with Glazer's Camera here in Seattle. I do all the event programming for the store. But today I am doing a presentation and I'm going to talk about instant film. Um, I'm going to talk about Polaroid cameras and I'm also going to talk about some of the great options available from Fujifilm from cameras and printers. Um, I have a presentation for this and I have some sample prints and all that kind of good stuff. Um, but I'd love to get questions from you guys along the way. Um, so if you have questions about the Polaroid cameras available on the market right now um, or printers or any of the Fujifilm Instax lineup, please post those on the YouTube chat or on the Facebook comments. And what I'm going to do is during my presentation, I'm just going to pause from the presentation periodically and check to see if you have any questions. So don't be shy. This is a great opportunity to ask questions about any of the instant film and uh, cameras and printers on the market today. Um, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get right into my presentation. So we can talk about um, instant film and why I love it so much and how much fun it can be for uh, you guys out there in the world. Um, so my love of instant film goes back to uh, my youth. Um, we have a lot of nostalgia around instant film. Um, if you were a kid of the 80s, um, you probably grew up with a one-step from Polaroid in the house. Um, I still remember that camera <laughs> as a kid. Um, and I still have just a couple of prints left from it, which is pretty cool. Um, but why do we like instant film? Uh, there is a tactile opportunity that we get to have with an instant film uh, print. Um, we can experience a print versus just looking at everything in our screen. You know, These days, we tend to ingest and view images only on screens, our laptops, our iPhones, our iPads, or other kinds of tablets. And with a print, we can kind of slow down and, and have a different experience. And that's one of the things that's really um, important to me about using instant film. I also love, um, especially when I travel, and you're going to hear me say this a bunch, um, when I travel, I normally love to carry one of these little printers um, because if I meet people along the way and take their portrait, I can then um, give them a print right then and there. Um, and I'll talk about how all of these work. Um, but that's part of what I love about instant film. Over the years, I've done photo booths and other kinds of things um, where I've just used some kind of instant camera, and people love it. They could be six years old or 89, and no matter the age, Everybody still has this love of instant film. There's this joy of watching it come out of the camera or the printer and then watching the image develop before your eyes. So it's just a lot of fun. Um, so with that said, I'm going to go through these slides. If, again, you have questions, please post them. So I'm going to start talking about Polaroid options. So Polaroid's history is actually quite long. Uh, Polaroid itself was founded in 1937, which was just, you know, a couple of years ago. And over the years, there's been a lot of variety of cameras and film types available from Polaroid. Um, about uh, 10 years ago or so, Polaroid did discontinue making instant film, which made a lot of people in the world very, very sad, myself included. Um, so those of us who had stockpiles of instant film, kept it in our fridge and would use it sparingly because we didn't know what was going to happen. Um, and then a couple of years after Polaroid discontinued making instant film, um, a company or a group rather called the Impossible Project um, was able to take over a facility in the Netherlands and access to equipment that was used by Polaroid for making the film. And they started making their own film. Um, they did some Kickstarters, I believe, along the way, but they did have to kind of start from scratch with the formulas. And so their film is a little bit different. It doesn't have the same exact look that some of that Polaroid film that we grew up with did. Um, but there is a love of it. So I'm going to um, show you guys here, and you'll see some of these on the screen. But the look and feel of this film, um, the black and white is my favorite, um, has kind of this awesome, truly analog feel to it. Um, with that said, the Polaroid cameras that you can get today, um, like the new Polaroid Now, which just came out um, recently, is a full analog experience. Uh, you turn the camera on, you point, and you take a photo. Um, you do have some options to make the photo a little bit brighter or darker, turn the flash off or on. 
So think about like your environment that you're taking photos in and decide if you want to take advantage of one of those options. I will say a lot of times with um, the Polaroid One Step, I do use the flash. So here's an awesome uh, photo from a uh, model that I worked with late last year. Um, so I did use a flash on this one. We had, she had this awesome yellow outfit and we had a great yellow background. And so the flash on this one worked really well. So just think about your environment and think about whether you want to turn that off or on. Um, the current Polaroid camera started about $100, um, which is pretty inexpensive. And again, it takes us back to the nostalgia. It gives us kind of like a sense of history. And it's really fun to watch that print come out and wait for it to develop. Um, these are also rechargeable now. So like this new guy has a little USB-C port right here. So you just plug that into a USB charger and get it all charged up. And on the back, there's also a counter that'll tell you how many frames you have left in your pack. That's important to know because if you're gonna go out for the day and only take one camera with you and you only have one or two frames, you might get sad because you'll run out of film. So check that counter before you go out to take photos to make sure you have an extra pack of film with you or maybe a couple, depending on what you're gonna go out to do. Um, these cameras also have a self timer, which is pretty awesome. And uh, that could be fun for uh, if you set this on a stable surface. This particular one, the now doesn't actually have a tripod mount. Um, so if you're gonna use a self timer, you're gonna wanna put this on something that's relatively stable to be able to take advantage of that. Um, I've also done some selfies with it, I'm not going to lie, and you could do that too. So anyhow, lots of great options, um, and here's uh, some other options that have come out. So this one in this shot actually is the first One Step 2 that Polaroid came out with in the past couple of years. Um, long story short, Impossible Project took over the Polaroid brand and went with a brand called Polaroid Originals for a couple of years. And now they just are back to being full-on Polaroid. So if you're looking to follow them on Instagram, literally it's just at Polaroid now um, on Instagram. Um, but this was the first one that came out after Impossible Project took over um, and started branding towards the Polaroid Originals uh, brand. This is also an iType camera. And what that means is there's a built-in battery and it takes the iType film, which is made by Polaroid. Now, you can also use the 600 film, which if you've used any Polaroid cameras over the past 15 to 20 years, you've probably heard of that film before. Um, but those film, the 600 film packs have a battery built in. That means you could take that film and put it into older 600 cameras if you happen to find one of those. Um, sometimes you can find them online, sometimes you can find them in thrift stores. Sometimes they're five bucks, sometimes they're 150 to 300 dollars. It just depends on where you're buying it through and if it's been refurbished or not. Um, so again, lots of different options on the market. Um, so this was the first new one step I got, but I recently just picked up the new uh, Polaroid Now. Um, I, of course, had to get a red one. Um, as you can tell, I like vibrant colors. Um, I will say I do like the yellow one that's on the slides, but I went with red um, because I love red. Um, so, and there's several other colors available. Uh, there's also a fun one that they came out with um, in conjunction with the Stranger Things show about a year or two ago. They came out with the one that you see on the slide here that's blue with upside down text. Um, and there's also a special Stranger Thing, Stranger Thing film available. We have just a handful of packs of that left here at the store. Um, but these are all pretty simple. It's shoot what you get. When you take a photo, that photo comes out. Um, so think about your composition um, and think about one of the things I like to consider when I'm using instant cameras, especially these, is that I like to slow down. You know, a pack of film has eight frames in it. So if I go out for the day, I might only take two or three or four. Now, typically I might have this and some other kind of camera with me. Um, so that does help me kind of slow down. Um, but the film isn't super cheap. The film packs start at around $16 and go to about 20 or so dollars, depending on what type of film you get. And the film is available in black and white or color. Um, but like I said, think about your composition, think about what you want to photograph, um, and then shoot sparingly, because the cost could add up to some folks. Uh, the film packs, like I said, start around $16, so that's around $2 a photo. So one of my favorite cameras, and I didn't bring it with me today, um, is this old SX-70 LAN camera. 
Um, these are the folder cameras, so it actually folds down quite small. Um, and this one, I'm not the original owner for this one. It made its way into my life uh, several years ago. And then I'd actually given it to a friend of mine to hang on to uh, when I was living uh, in another part of the world. And when I came back, he gave it back to me. So I was so grateful for that because it's a really awesome little camera. Um, if you look for an S670 online right now, you'll find many that are like refurbished. Some might be for parts or that kind of thing. They can get expensive. Um, over the years, I've looked in and been lucky and found a couple in like thrift stores for like $20. That's pretty rare. It's going to be a very rare occasion to find that these days. Um, you might find these on eBay from anywhere from $99 to potentially $300. Um, there are some perks to the SX-70 line. Um, there is a different film type that you need to get to go into these cameras, um, and it says it on the box. So if you have an SX-70, you want to get the SX-70 film. It's also available in color, black and white, and that's what these were actually shot on. So like this photo right here, which I'm going to hold up, and we're going to... So this was shot on the SX-70. So the cool thing about this is you do get a little bit of a depth of field um, effect because I can get a little bit closer to my subject. Um, there's an autofocus in this camera that actually works really well. Um, and you can also play around with things like neutral density filter if it's super, super bright um, outside. But I just love this camera because it also folds up pretty small um, and it fits into many, many different bags. Um, so the film for these is available at Glazers, of course. And um, you can order your film online if you don't want to pop into the store. Um, but the SX-70, again, is a love, but they aren't made any longer. So um, if you're interested in getting a vintage model, just make sure you can get the film for it. Um, for There's old folder type of LAN cameras that you cannot buy the film for anymore. Well, technically you could. However, it's going to be very, very expensive because the peel-apart film that went into some of those bigger cameras um, is no longer being manufactured. Um, so you might find it online from anywhere from 40 to like $100. So I won't dive too deep into that, but I am going to check. Um, here's, I'll, here's one more slide on just a few samples that were shot with the SX-70. Um, just so you can see um, how the image on the left, uh, that's my friend Steven. I'm a little bit closer to him, so the gate there in Chinatown here is a little bit blurred out. Um, the photo in the middle is my other friend, Hank, and I'm a little further away, so that depth of field got a little bit different. And then I had my friend, Stephen, take a photo of me. Um, so you can just see, like, how fun it is, how nice the film is. It's got a really nice vintage feel to it, and it's uh, something that I love a lot. So um, I'm going to check to see if there's any questions in the chat room before we get into um, the Instax stuff. So let me just get that tab open. Um, okay, so here we go. I'm going to read the question, and then I'm going to answer it. So Dean is asking, do the new Polaroid cameras use rollers to develop the print as it emerges? Yes, they do have rollers in them. And um, I can get this one to open up. So Devin, we're gonna, so you can see here, that's what the inside looks like. So your pack of film would just pop right into there. Um, and then when you put a new pack in, You'll close it, and it should automatically eject a little dark slide. Um, don't open it again after that's happened, because <laughs> you'll ruin your film, okay? <laughs> um, what is the Stranger Things film? So Polaroid, and I don't have any of their special film with me today. Polaroid, every season, comes out with new special films that are like one-time run films. So they've done, like, uh, basically the frames. And I'm going to show you a Fuji frame just to give you an example. Do you see how there's, like, a colored border here? Or there's, like, little comic book things here. Uh, whoop. Seven. <laughs> there we go. So you can see how there's textured. These are some Fujifilm examples. But Polaroid comes out with their own versions of these uh, periodically. We're going to zoom back out there. <laughs> and Stranger Things, they had come out with that special camera, special edition camera. They also came out with special edition film. So basically, the frame around the print has, like, graphics and little things that are tied into the show Stranger Things. They also have, like, rainbows, and, like, at Christmas they came out with red metallic and gold metallic. Oh, I have the gold here. Um, so they just do special films from time to time, so you can see that's got kind of, like, a little metallic sheen to it. Um, 
So normally when a special film comes out, I'll buy at least one pack. Um, and then that's when I definitely kind of hold on to and save for a special project. Um, let's see. What other questions? Okay. So Dean says he has an SX-70 whose rollers were worn out, so the film didn't process properly. Yeah. Um, sometimes those can be cleaned up. Um, on the older cameras, I'll normally take a cotton swab and a little rubbing alcohol to try and clean the rollers up. But if they're really, really rusted, um, yeah, you might encounter some problems with the film feeding through. And that can actually create a uh, little negative space in the image itself. Um, so, all right. So keep those questions coming. Um, I'm going to talk about Instax now, um, and if you've met me in person or been on one of my photo walks, you've probably heard me say some of this stuff before, so I'll apologize now if it's a repeat. Um, but <laughs> um, I use the Instax stuff a lot. So uh, where is my Zoom for screen sharing? Here we go. Somewhere on there. i got too many windows open, folks. Okay, here we go. So now, How do you think I feel? <laughs> Devin has all the folks. So the voice in the background that you might hear occasionally is Devin, uh, who, if you've been to Glazers, you've met him. Uh, you've even seen him host some of these sessions. Um, and he's going to have some. He's going to have some comments at some point uh, during this part of the presentation. So um, insects. So Fujifilm has been making insect cameras. Honestly, I don't know how long they've been. Devin, do you know how long they've been making insect cameras? Uh, long enough to make a lot of money off of them. <laughs> <laughs> and have a lot of different model options. So you have mini cameras and printers. You have square cameras and printers. Um, and there's even a wide camera. Which, so I'm going to talk through each of these. Um, Depending on your budget, depending on the functionality, you might find an Instax camera that's as low as 55 bucks, and they go to about 160, again, depending on the functionality and what you want it to do. There's analog cameras, so that means what you shoot is what you get. And there's hybrid cameras. 1999. 1999. So that's really not that long ago. I mean, compared to other instant film, I guess. But no, it, it, no. But that's, that's, good on that's a while. So... Uh, who knew that answer? Oh, the world. The internet. <laughs> the internet. The internet. The internet knows all the things. So. <laughs> um, so you have hybrid options. So that means you can shoot and print, um, or you have printers. So I'm going to kind of break it down. I'm going to break it down for you. Okay, here we go. Fujifilm Insect Mini. So the most current Insect Mini is the 11. Um, this just came out within the past six months. I'm pretty sure, came out in 2020. Um, I actually don't have one of these right now because I have too many, I know, Devin's in shock. I have a lot of other Instax things. So, you know, if you saw the Instax, I have a whole cart of Instax stuff at home. It's kind of crazy. Anyhow, um, the cool thing about the Mini and the, the Mini 11 or the 8 or the 9 or even some of those older ones is it's great for all ages. Um, it's point and shoot. What you shoot is what you get. You have a flash. Um, and you have a selfie mirror, so we do like to do our selfies with these cameras. There's nothing wrong with that. This is great for parties. Um, again, it's that full analog experience. So when you put a pack of film in there and you take a photo, that photo is going to come out, and it is what it is. It might be fantastic. Maybe you missed your composition, so then you have to take another one. But each image is unique. And that is one of the things, honestly, I do love about the analog experience with some of these. Um, with the Mini 11, they did update the exposure option in that if you're in a darker space, um, as some of the examples I've seen is that it's actually pulling up more of the shadows in the and the background. So you might get more of the ambient light in combination with the use of flash. Um, and so over the past year or so, Fuji's been running um, this campaign called Don't Give, Don't Just Take, meaning if you... Um, meet someone and you take their photo, you could give them a print. Um, and I'll talk about that more. Um, this is from the SQ10, uh, which is a square format, and I'll get to those in a minute. But if I meet someone and I take their portrait, this is a gentleman down at Pike Place Market, I, I just basically said, hey, can I take your portrait? And he's like, oh, well, sure. And so I said, I'll give you one. And so I give one and then I keep one so that I can have a memento from that moment. Um, the Mini 11 does also take AA batteries, 
It's not rechargeable. But there are some other options from Fujifilm that are rechargeable. Um, so we have the Instax Mini Link printer, which I'm going to talk about more in depth. And we have the Instax Mini Lee Play, which is a camera and printer all in one. Um, and this has a lens with a glass element, which is really nice. Um, there's a selfie mirror as well. Um, and the really nice thing about the Lee Play is that you do have some options to disable flash, exposure compensation, and filters. Um, but we'll talk about that more in a moment. Let's talk about the Instax Mini Link printer first. So there's so many things you can do with these printers. Um, these are really designed now to connect into your iPhone um, and print from your phone. Now, with that said, you could take images from your traditional digital camera, transfer them to your phone, and then print them to the Instax Mini printer. It's really, really great. When I'm traveling or when I go to visit friends, I might take a photo of their puppy dog, and I'd be like, oh, here you go, here's a print. Or take photos of some of my closest friends and be able to have a copy for myself and have a copy that they get to have. Um, sometimes when I travel or when I photograph models, I will also give them a print. Um, again, it's just a nice little thank you in the moment, um, along with, obviously, digital copies of the images and things, too. Um, these are also great for parties in the mini link. Within the app, you can actually connect up to five phones to this printer, which means you can collaborate on images or you can um, just people at random could print. You have to give them permission to do that, of course. Um, but <laughs> um, it is a really nice option. So, you know, I know parties are a little bit, we're not doing a ton of parties right now, um, but you could have a socially distanced gathering and, uh, and do your photos with your mask on and have prints because to me, these are, you know, every day is a, there's a moment to document that becomes a history of our life, right? Um, I also love these for travel. Um, if you've taken any Fuji workshop with me or a travel workshop with me, you've heard me talk about this before. Um, this little link is now the smallest printer that they make, and it's pretty much almost always in my bag if I'm traveling. Um, Devin has the old SP2. He just pulled it out of his bag, you know. <laughs> um, so if you are traveling, if you create a portrait of someone that you meet along the way, um, giving them that print is a really awesome thank you um, because, they're, you know, you might not see that person again. Um, sure, maybe you can get their email address and send it to them, but sometimes you're traveling in parts of the world where people don't have ready access to email or even smartphones. So leaving, leaving them with an analog print is a really great, great thank you. Um, and again, there's also like this smile that happens when they see the print developing, and there's just this like instantaneous joy, hence the title of this presentation, The Joy of Instant Film, right? Um, I also love to print photos. Um, all my family spread out all over the country. I have cousins in California. My mom is in Florida. Um, I have aunts in two different cities. So sometimes I'll print photos, um, a little selfies of me, you know, because sometimes you want to print your own selfie, right? <laughs> and I'll print a couple of these and send a little note just to check in with them and be like, hey, this is what I look like right now, you know? <laughs> in case you forgot, you know, because some of my family I haven't seen in a couple of years, you know, we're not traveling right now. So this is just another way for me to stay connected with people by printing images and sharing them. I also make journals. So, um, and I'm going to show you a special image. So, here's Devin. <laughs> um, wait, here's more of Devin. Um, so, I started doing these journals um, late last year when I do a photo walk or using them for goals. Um, so, I'm printing images or taking photos and putting them into journals. I'll talk about that just a little bit more. So, there is a link app that you can use to uh, print your images from your device to your printer. So Devin is going to queue up this video. And um, so just take a quick peek at that. And while we're doing that, I'm going to check the room for questions.
Is it working? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Now let's take a peek at the Insects Mini Lee Play. The Mini Lee Play is the most current hybrid camera from Fujifilm. So we're going to get the right one queued up, and then we'll do the next one. <laughs> Camera will be on you for a hot second. All right. So I have three videos for you guys, basically running you through the current Fujifilm apps for printing. Um, and the first one we're going to talk about is the link, since we were just talking about the link prayer. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. And I'm, you're going to hear me say, let's take a peek, a lot. Sorry. <laughs> So let's take a quick peek at the Fujifilm Instax Mini Link Printer. So basically you start by opening the app as we would with any of our devices these days. And what you can see is it's prompting me immediately to go into my Photos app. So if you were just in there or you used it a week ago and you're in a printing mode, you may find that it does something like that. So I always just hit cancel and then back arrow to get back to the main screen. Now, the first thing I'll notice is that a lot of times it will show me what I just printed, um, unless I've done a full stop on the app within the device. For today, I just want to show you the simple print option, super quick. What I do like to do is I like to favorite images that I think I might print. And um, let's have a little fun and print one of these funky photos that I took of a building in the South Lake Union area using an app called Hipstamatic, which creates this faux aurora borealis over uh, in part of your frame. It's kind of fun. Um, what I will look at here is the filter option. And basically, these are a few presets that Fujifilm has included within the app if you wanted to do a little pop of color or even make the image monochromatic. In this case, I want to make those colors stand out a bit and just see uh, what it will look like. So there's without the filter and there it is with. So what the filter did was it made the image a little bit brighter because this image is a little bit dark. So I'm going to go with that. You can also go in and do correction where you could play with the brightness, uh, the contrast, or even the saturation. Um, I would encourage you to handle these things fairly lightly. If you saturate the image too much, the colors will start to look a little bit surreal and otherworldly, um, which for this image probably would be okay. But if you're printing a photo of somebody, like a person, uh, I would definitely keep the saturation kind of lean. So I'm going to go with this. I'm just going to hit the little print button. That's going to send the information to the printer via Bluetooth. And shortly, I will have a print that I can look at. The other thing I'll take a, just a quick moment to show you is uh, some of the frame options that you can play around with. Um, these are things that Fujifilm updates periodically. And I'm just going to cancel here, and I'm going to go to frame print. So these are little different options that, depending on your images um, or time of year, you know, maybe you have a cool selfie of someone and or a self-portrait or a photo with you and your best friend and it's their birthday, so you could pick that one. Um, maybe you just want to have a cute little message that says hello. So again, I'm going to go to my favorites. I'm going to pick my recent selfie because I got my hair done. And I see where the hello is on the frame and it doesn't quite work for me. But I can just open frame here and play around and see if there is one of these frames that makes sense. So the sparkles I use from time to time. Um, I do actually like some of these graphical elements, but it's also about finding the one that makes the most sense for the image. So like that one could be interesting. Here's a top hat, but it's too low for my head. Here's a mask, but my position of my face is just off by a little bit. Um, there's some bubbles, and here's some 80s lines, and here's some fireworks. So you kind of get the idea. Merry Christmas, and here's a cat with a plant, which is kind of cute. Um, and this one has got like some red hearts, and it says love. And on a different photo, that would be really cool as well. So I'm going to pick this one because it's very um, 
80s, and I'm an 80s girl, and I'm just going to hit print. So that's another fun thing that you can play around with. There's a ton more options available, so once you get your Instax Mini Link printer, download the app, play around with it. You can take photos using the app. Uh, you can do selfies. Um, you can do collages. And one cool feature is that you can go into what is called party mode. And what party mode will let you do is connect up to five Instax printers, I'm sorry, up <laughs> to five phones to one Instax printer. So, so many options. But that's a quick peek at the Fujifilm Instax Mini Link Printer. So that, like I said, is a quick peek <laughs> at the Instax Mini Link. And here's like my little print. It's got the little lines. It's kind of cute. Um, like I said, I'll send that to my mom. I just got my hair cut. So I was like, oh, we'll send that to my mom. Sure. It works well with the frame. It does. Well, and that's why I think in the video, like, I'll, I'll pick a photo and say, I might want to add a frame to it. So then I'll look through the frames and just, like, take that process to find the one that makes the most sense. And then sometimes it doesn't make sense to use one at all. But they're fun. They're intended to be fun. Um, there's little messages on there. Like I said, there's like a happy birthday and a happy new year and like that kind of thing. And Fujifilm does upload, update those through the app from time to time. So um, that's a little bit on the link. Um, now we're going to talk about uh, the Lee Play, which is similar but has some different features, um, which I really love. So if I'm thinking mini, I either have the link or the Lee Play with me. The Lee Play is more robust in that, um, and they're basically the same size. You can see they're pretty small. This one's actually technically a little bit shorter, and it is actually smaller than my big phone, because <laughs> I get the big phone. Um, big phone. Um, so on here, you, can, uh, you have your power button. You have buttons on the back so that you can print um, or preview images, and there's a full menu system. You can do exposure compensation. There's uh, built-in filters that are kind of similar to, you know, think about like an Instagram filter. You could shoot in black and white. There's vivid. There's just some different options in there for you to play around with. Um, so this is a camera. Um, it's a hybrid camera. So there is a digital sensor in here. And there's a spot to take a micro SD card. I may definitely recommend getting one of those micro SD cards. Internal memory on this camera is only about 45 photos. So with a micro SD, you could, I don't know, hold thousands depending on how big the card is. Um, I normally get like a 32 gig card and I have yet to fill one of them up. Um, I do periodically go through and copy the photos off so I still have a digital copy of those images. Um, but I tend to keep the images on the card. The cool thing is that if you take a photo, you can actually go through and reprint that image as many times as you want for as much film as you want to use. So the joy with the Lee Play is you can take a photo, you can print it right then and there, um, or if it didn't come out the way you wanted to, you just reframe and take a new one and then you print that one. So with the analog options, so those basic models that are around 50 to $70, those are gonna be what you shoot is what you get. With these hybrid options, you have the option to shoot, 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 and then print what you want. And if you have a real winner of a shot, like I said, you could print it multiple times. Um, you can also connect your smartphone to this via Bluetooth. Whoops, I'm going to drop it. <laughs> and print images that are on your device. Um, so you could do that through an iPad or a tablet or your iPhone or your Android phone. So the apps are both available for iOS and Android. Um, and it's the same process, a little bit different. Um, it doesn't have as many functions in the printing option with the Lee Play that the Link does. Um, but normally for me, I'll do an edit on my phone first, and then I'll print. So I think we'll queue up the Lee Play video next. Working on it. Working on it. Um, and it's... It's similar, it's just slightly different, and I had a problem during recording, and you get to see how to fix that problem. So I normally like to leave the problems in there, because sometimes we have to troubleshoot things. Um, that's part of our jobs as photographers. Um, but it was an easy problem to fix. So here we go. Here we go. Now let's take a peek at 
the Insects Mini Lead Play. The Mini Lead Play is the most current hybrid camera from Fujifilm. And by hybrid, I mean it allows you to do digital prints and analog prints. So the joy of the Lead Play gives you the opportunity to create images digitally, save them to a micro SD card, and then also print what you want. Um, so that is really, really pretty awesome. So you could take a really cool photo with the Lee Play itself and print five copies or ten copies or as many as you want. Or you could take photos and be like, oh, that framing wasn't quite right. Let me move this way and then print the good ones, if that makes sense. The other thing you can do is you can connect to your devices and print images on your devices to the Lee Play. So I'll do this a lot when I travel. So I like to have either the link or the lead play with me in that it gives me a variety of options for either an instant print capture on the go or the ability to import images from my digital camera, uh, my Fujifilm X-Series camera, onto my device and then print them from my phone. Now, you don't have to be a Fujifilm digital camera owner to use this app. You just have to have a camera and the lead play so that you can connect to it and be able to print images. Now, this is pretty, pretty simple to get started with. Um, what I will normally do here is direct print. This lets me select an image. And I like to favorite my images that I'm thinking about printing. And so I'm going to go to uh, this photo here. It's a really cute little photo. Um, and you can play around with uh, a slight edit of the print if you want to. Here I might actually boost the saturation just a little bit. Um, and then here I might look at the auto filter as well. And once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to hit print. And guess what? It's saying there's a problem. It isn't connected. So my guess is the camera turned off, which totally happens. So I'm turning the camera back on. And once it sees it, I can connect again close this, and now print. So the camera itself might close out or shut down after 30 seconds to a minute. Um, so you might see that message pop up from time to time. And there's nothing wrong with it. It just means the camera went to sleep or turned itself off to save battery life. Um, once that's done printing, I could go in and print another one. Um, I can print, like I said, more than one of the same image. If I took a photo of someone and wanted to give them a copy of the print. I love to do this when I travel. It's super beneficial. Um, you can also do live remote shooting. So I'm going to do that. So live view on. So now I can actually control the camera. And I'll do this here. Hello. <laughs> um, with the live view. And from within the app, I can... Uh, take a photo. So this is my little setup here at home. Um, I can turn the flash on or off or use the self timer. But I'm not going to take a photo so I'm not wasting that print. But you get the idea. So it's pretty cool. You can take a photo with the app. So you can actually remotely shoot with your Fujifilm Instax Mini Lee Play. And uh, that is just another great option that you have with this. There's other options within the app. You can add sound files and do all that kind of fun stuff. Um, but I use the direct print the most. So again, with the Lee Play, you can take photos with the camera itself, or you can print images that are on your mobile device directly to the Lee Play. So it's a lot of fun, and that's just a super quick look at that app. All right, so that's just a quick look, and here's my cute little print from a coffee shop here in Seattle. Um, on the fun comic film, uh, which I have a little bit of a stockpile left off. <laughs> All right, so those are your mini options. So what I mean by mini, the mini, M-I-N-I, film options that you can get out there. Um, now, we want to talk about square options. So there's a few different options that you'll find for the square film. Um, the first thing to keep in mind, and... Uh, what? Is that me? That's you. <laughs> Devin and Kate are famous now. Um, so I think I had just gotten the SQ6, and Devin and I were doing a photo booth in an event, and I was like, oh, hey, let me do a double exposure. 
because one of my favorite things to do with these cameras is playing around with double exposures, and I'll show you some samples of those in just a second. Um, but with the square film, this is mini film. So this is about the size of a credit card. The square film is just a little bit larger. So I think of it as like one and a half times bigger than a mini print. Um, it's not quite as big as your Polaroid film, as you can see. Um, but I'm not going to lie, I love it because I love the square format in general. So with the SQ6, um, which is still readily available, and of course I had to get some kind of red version. There's white and gold and blue, I think, anyhow. Um, Again, it's a full analog experience. What you shoot is what you get. Um, the fun thing with this camera, there are a few setting options. There's also a tripod mount. So there's a self timer. There's a selfie mirror so you can properly frame up your self portraits when you want to do them. Uh, there's little covers that go over the flash that change the color of the flash. So as you can see, my very serious double exposure self portraits. Um, one of me is red and one of me is my normal skin tone-ish. Um, and they're overlaid. So there's a double exposure mode in this camera. Um, and then I use the gel cover on one of the exposures to make it look a little bit different. So just a ton of fun. Again, what you shoot is what you get. Um, and this film is slightly more expensive than the mini film. Um, but you can get a two-pack of it and you save a couple of bucks that way. Um, other options within the Square family are going to be the SQ10 or SQ20, which are digital, hybrid. So basically, when they first came out with a hybrid, so that means a digital sensor and giving you the option to print instant film, the SQ10 was the first one. And then they came out with the SQ20, and then they came out with a Lee Play. So these are like your hybrid, I want to do more than just print, I want to do more than just take a photo. Um, this lets you just take a photo, um, you can't use it as a printer, the Lee Play will let you do both of those in one device, which is pretty cool. Um, the uh, SQ20, it's fine, we can stay on the slides here, sure. I'm being indecisive and Devin doesn't know what to do with me because I keep picking up things. Um, but again, you have the option with these cameras, the SQ10 or 20, to do analog or digital. Um, and what I normally do, I get my SD card, the little micro SD card, put that in there and just keep one in there. So every uh, hybrid instant film camera I have has at least one you know, I have at least one micro SD card for it. That lets me take as many photos as I want to, basically, and reprint as many photos and as times as I want to. One of the things that's really nice about the SQ10 or 20 is that there are functions like double exposure mode. You can disable the flash. Um, there are built-in filters, so kind of like an Instagram filter where you can play around and you could shoot in black and white or have some different color options. You can also adjust the exposure and the vignette of an image before or after you take it. The cool thing too is sometimes I will go through and I'll edit a photo and make it black and white and print that and I might go back into the exact same image and do a color version as well. So there's just a lot of options and that, those are edits you can do before or after you take the photo. Um, and one of my favorite projects that I've been doing along the way, and some of these folks don't know that their face is about to be on camera, <laughs> um, but um, I have like double exposures that I've done with people. Um, this is a model that I've worked with a few times and just a brick wall, and I just love the texture. Um, so double exposures have just been oh so much fun for me to play with. Like here's one in our Chinatown district with my friend Steven again on our masked photo walk outing day, um, and if you, you know, if you're a film shooter in Seattle, you might know this guy, this is Jose. Um, anyhow, lots of fun to play around with the double exposure uh, feature, <laughs> um, and I'm doing like a whole portrait series on just that one feature. So I love this format also because of the size of the film is a little bit larger. You also have a printer, so I keep picking things up, sorry Devin. <laughs> Um, I can do this. So, but this is your printer, right? So here's the mini link printer. So this does your mini film. And this is the SP3, which does square film. Now, the SP3 connects wirelessly to your device um, and does use a different app than uh, the link or the replay. And it uses the original Instax Share app. So if you have an older SP1 or SP2 printer, it uses that exact same app. You would just go in and say, hey, I'm on the SP3. Um, 
the cool thing, again, like these other printers, is that I can connect images um, from my phone to the printer to print them out. I can give those prints to people along the way. Um, and if you are on certain X-Series cameras from Fujifilm, we'll connect directly to the SP3 printer, and you can print directly from your camera. So if you're on a Fujifilm X-Series camera, just look at the specs, do a quick search online to see if you can connect directly to the SP3 or SP1 or 2, depending on what model of printer or camera that you have. So I have just one more little video, uh, and this is the SQ, this is the SP3 video. Um, again, it's just a quick walkthrough on how to use that app for printing. It does look, work a little bit differently, um, and I too encountered a problem. So I like to leave, again, those problems in the mix so that you can see how to troubleshoot things when you forget something as simple as getting it connected. So here's that video. So now let's take a peek at the Fujifilm SP3 and printing with the Intex Share app. So yes, it is a different app. This is the original app that we used with SP3 and SP1 and 2 uh, from Fujifilm. So it's been around a little bit longer. The functions on it are a little bit different, um, but basically we're just going to uh, get you started with it. So Instax Share, basically once you're loaded, you want to go to select from photos. So here it's going to load my recent photos, and I'm going to pick an image that's already cropped to square because I'm thinking intentionally. Um, Basically, once it's loaded, that gives you a preview of what it would look like. And then we can go in and edit it. So if you wanted to rotate the picture, you can do that in here. If you want to zoom in or out, you could do that in here. Um, if you want to play around with uh, maybe making the image a little bit brighter, uh, this one's already in black and white, so there's really not saturation to play with. And the contrast is pretty high, so I don't really need to move that. Um, and there are all also filters in here. So as you can see, the black and white filter didn't really do much. The intelligence filter did bring the shadows up a little bit, so I might leave that on. Once that's done, we hit OK. And as long as your printer is on, you should be able to connect and print. So it's not working, and this does work a little bit more differently than the mini printers and the newest printers. So you do actually need to go into your Wi-Fi settings and connect to the Fujifilm Instax printer. So it's considered a wireless network. Uh, the Li Play and the Link actually do Bluetooth, but here we're doing the actual Instax printer. So now that's connected, we can go back to the Share app, connect and print. And notice I'm not getting that error message anymore. So just like the other printers, it takes just a moment to print um, not terribly long. It does tell you how many frames you have left in the pack, and that is important to know. Um, when you go to print something, it won't actually let you print anything if there's no frames left, but it is good to know how where you're at on prints, because if you're going to go out for the day and you only have a couple of prints left in the printer, then you might want to take an extra pack of film with you. Once printing is complete, you just tap OK, and that little green icon in the top right corner tells you that image has already been printed with this printer. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, there are some other options in here. I will let you know that if you have uh, multiple older Instax printers, um, if you have an SP1 or 2, you would actually use the same app. You just have to go in and tell it you're on the mini printer or the square printer. And that's, that's that uh, SP3 in a nutshell on printing. Okay. Oops. Yeah. There we go. So we have a TV in here, and uh, I've been listening to the videos, hearing how silly that sounds. All right, here we go. Just a few more slides. So uh, thanks for the comments coming in, everybody. Really appreciate that. Glad to know you guys are enjoying this session. I have just a handful of slides left, so don't leave me yet. We're almost there, <laughs> unless you really have to go. But we want you to hang out with us today for sure. So. And the next camera to talk about super quick is the Mac Daddy. It is the Instax Wide, so I have a couple of sample prints here um, from the Wide. Just to show you, that film is a little bit larger, so here's your square film. And double mini. Double mini, double mini, and here's your mini, okay? So you can see they kind of just 
you know, what do you, what's your goals? Do you want to travel and carry tiny prints? Do you want a mid-size print or do you want more? Now, at this time, there's not a wide printer. I get that question a lot. Um, so I keep passing that question along to uh, friends. But not yet. Maybe one day. You guys keep asking. Who knows? Um, but wide, <laughs> wide is really awesome. Um, it is, again, a full analog experience. What you shoot is what you get. The cool thing about the wide camera is there is a zoom lens built into that. Um, it does take AA batteries. There's also exposure compensation. Um, and in the kit, there's a close-up lens. And when I take portraits of people with a wide, I love to use that close-up lens. So I'm not going to spend too much more time on that because we also only have a few minutes left. But if you want that bigger print, the insects wide is where you're going to want to go. So again, here's just side by side of some of those prints just to give you an idea on how different the sizing is. And the project ideas. So um, I do these photo walks here in Seattle and I have led them in other cities around the world. And one of the things that I've started to do is create photo journals. Um, and uh, you can see I've added some writing to it. I, you know, have written, done some kind of writing off and on for as long as I can remember. Um, but here, Devin, if we swap over to the camera. Um, so this is just a little Hanna Mule uh, paper journal that I love, this form factor and size. And I just started, you know, putting photos and some text. Um, and it becomes like a little reminder of the, of the experience. And so the guy in this frame is Devin, who you've heard in the background a little bit. Um, and he actually led that photo walk with me. Um, and this is the favorite shot from that day, honestly. Say, no, that looks like propaganda. <laughs> um, but this is using the double exposure on the SQ-10, actually. Um, so that's one thing you could do, journals or goal planning or things like that. It's a lot of fun. You could also uh, buy those tiny clothespins and twine or fairy lights and do a wall display in your bedroom or your living room. Uh, this is a project that I'm working on, but it means going through an entire bin of prints to pick out the images that I want to highlight and show. So, yes, Devin. We do have a pertinent question. Okay. Uh, what are you using to secure your images in the journal? Kind of oh, um, well, okay. Right now I use scotch tape, um, or you could use washi tape, but washi tape isn't super adhesive. So right now I'm just using scotch tape. So you could uh, tape it to the back of the photo. Um, and the cool thing about scotch tape is that it shouldn't leave too much of an adhesive on there, but for right now I'm just using scotch tape. Um, on my goals journal, I did use washi tape, but the washi tape doesn't stick super well. So I ended up using scotch tape and then covering it with washi tape to make it look cute because some, that's kind of what washi tape is for. <laughs> so hopefully cuteness. for cuteness. Well, you know, hey. Um, so that's the presentation. Um, please feel free to follow me on Instagram. Um, I post a lot of travel and portrait photography, and um, I am working on tips and tricks videos and things like that. I'll also post updates for other events and workshops that I'm doing. Um, most of which are online, but I'm also trying to get back out there and do some photo walks again. Um, just did one a couple of weeks ago. So anyhow, uh, check out my Instagram feed. That's my selfless, uh, my shameless self-promotion for the day, um, at Kate Haley. Um, and check out my website. There's cool stuff there, too. I'll just say that. <laughs> um, do we have any other questions from those tuning in? Uh, just a lot of thank yous. So, okay. of course, shout out to Victoria, who was with us pretty much the whole time, yep. uh, if not the entire time. Um, right. uh, she asked what kind of tape you're using. We got scotch. Thanks. Now I know that my brother uh, is what my brother is talking about, <laughs> says Richard. <laughs> okay. Well, I will uh, thank everybody for tuning in today and remind you, this is kind of still just the beginning of our anniversary event here at Glazers. Uh, tomorrow we'll be back with Hannah Mule, Paper, and Victoria, Veronica Connor. Sorry, I got Victoria's name right in front of me. I'm so sorry, Veronica. Uh, you might not even be tuning in. But the cool thing about that event tomorrow with Hannah Mule is that we want you to submit images we're going to discuss those images and make recommendations for the best paper to print those images on. So check out Glazer's Anniversary, sorry, glazerscamera.com backslash anniversary 
to see the rest of the schedule for the next five weeks of programming. Uh, tomorrow we have Hanna Mule, like I said, for that session. Details on how to submit an image for that session are within the description. Um, and then this later this week we get into all Sony all the time. We have four live sessions with Sony. We have a Q&A with uh, Hector and Sarah. We have uh, Sony Artisan of Imagery, Sabrina Dang, on Thursday Ooh. evening to talk about making your photos look more like fashion editorial shoots. And this weekend, we have two sessions with Thibault Roland, who's also a Sony Artisan of Imagery. Uh, the first session is on long exposure photography, and the second is editing those fine art images. So check it out. So much more to come. Over this time, we have almost 40 sessions between now and October 18th. So don't miss it. Check it out. Register. And we'll also be sending you updates periodically with special promotions. So it's not just about education. There's also a lot of great sales happening in the store and online. So thank you all for tuning in. And we'll see you tomorrow at noon with Hanamil.